Okay, so what I want to do in the following series of, of talks is give you an idea of this wonderful notion which uh, was due to Levia relating the idea of a metric space to the idea of a category. So just start off with this really neat little observation here that if we take the triangle inequality for a metric space, so we're supposing we've got a metric space and D is a metric on some space, so D is uh, just going to give you the distance, so it's always a non-negative real number uh, associated to a pair of points. So the triangle inequality, which you all know, says the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is bigger than or equal to the distance uh, from A to C. And we have that the distance from A to A is got, has got to be zero. Um, but it's a positive number, so we can write that as zero is greater than or equal to the distance from A to A. You'll see why we've, we've drawn it like this uh, in a second. Uh, on the other hand, we've got the sort of the standard two morphisms in a category, uh, which are composition morphism. Sorry, it's a morph. It's a sort of metamorphism. It's uh, part of the structure of a category. So if we've got a home a category, then we've got the notion of composition from two home sets to a third home set. Uh, which looks bizarrely like this, at least structurally, and we've also got the notion of the identity uh, in each sort of endo home set from the home set from A to A. We have the identity map, which we can write as as a set map from the one object set into home from A to A. So we've got a distinguished morphism in there. So we've got a, uh, which we can write as a map from a one element set into that. So. So it's certainly remarkable that, that these two things look the same on, on this level. Uh, what is even more remarkable is there's actually uh, the same structure line be, behind these. So these are both examples of enriched categories. Um, so this is an ordinary category, this is a metric space, uh, but we can combine them into the notion of an enriched category. So I'll try and explain uh, what that is now. So the way to do that is just give you the definition of uh, category and show you how to alter it so that we can get an enriched category. Right, so, so C is a, a category, um, so if we have a collection of objects and we have for all, all pairs A and B, in the, oops, in the in the objects of C, we have a, a home set, so HOM AB. So that's supposed to be a set, so I'll just write that as an element in the objects of the category of sets. Uh, sounds slightly perverse, and I just want to say that's a, a set, but obviously this is how I'm going to generalize. So I've got a reason for writing it like that. So, and similarly for all uh, A, B, and C in the object of C, I have a morphism in the category of sets. So this is supposed to be composition. So this is uh, so we have there exists home certain distinguished thing uh, home A, B plus home B, C. We can compose to get. On C, and we also have the identity. So for all A in the object of C, there exists a star, a map from the one object set, which we call the identity on A into on A, A, and where these satisfy uh, some conditions. So we have associativity and the unicity, which I, I, I won't write down for you, but um, you, you know what they are. And the important thing to note here is that, let's find a different colour, which probably won't show up. Um, so this here and this here, hopefully uh, not make it too crowded, these two are both morphisms in set. So they're just set maps. So I've 
obviously written this so that I can just generalize it to other categories, but the question is what properties of the category set have I used here? So, um, well, I've used the Cartesian product in set and I've used this one object element in set. It turns out the right thing to do is to use a monoidal category. So if, if V is, uh, well, let's say V tensor 1, is a monoidal category, then we can define uh, categories enriched in V. Uh, so what, one example you might want to think about while I'm writing this out is say V is something like the category of abelian groups or the category of uh, vector spaces, something like that. So, uh, so we just have to modify our definition now. So v is, uh, C is a V category or category enriched in V. If we have a collection, uh, so that remains the same. So, but now we have to modify this. So, for, for each pair of objects, we want the HOM ABs not to be a set, but we want it just to be an element in the category V. So, we want it to be an object in V. So, if V is the category of vector spaces, we just want the HOM HOMs to be a vector space instead. Uh, similarly, we want a, a composition map, but this here. Here we've got an element in V, here we've got an element in V, we want to get a new element in V, but we've got the tensor product, so we can just stick the tensor product there, and this is supposed to be a morphism in V here. And similarly, for, uh, we want something similar to the identity, but we don't have the one element set, what do we have? We have the tensor unit. So uh, that was the role of that was played by the one object set in the category of set, the one element object in set. Okay, so as I say, you could take some category such as vector spaces or abelian groups, which gives some interesting notion that, that well, if we take the category of vector spaces, or I, I should say that of course we still have to satisfy these conditions, but it's not difficult to sort of write down the usual conditions there. So if we, if we take V to be vector spaces, then we, we get the notion of a linear category. If we take V to be a billion group, we get the notion of a, an additive category. So, so in the case of V being vector spaces, all the home sets are actually vector spaces, and the composition map have to be bilinear maps, um, etc. And we're still just picking out a distinguished element in, the, in, in that case. So what is more interesting, well, it's more bizarre perhaps, uh, and hence interesting from, from uh, a sort of um, a voyeuristic point of view, is if we take V to be a non-concrete category, so that the objects are not actually sets. So we can take, take R plus to be the category of uh, the objects are the positive numbers plus infinity, and the morphisms, um, so HOM AB. So we just want it to be a post set, so this is going to be equal to, let's just say, one element if A is bigger than or equal to B and is the empty set. Oops, can't write down here. Otherwise, and we can make this into a monoidal. This is a perfectly good category. We can make it this into a monoidal category. Um, whoops, running out of time. Make this into a monoidal category by just taking the usual sum uh, in the arithmetic sense of numbers and the unit object for the mon uh, that monoidal product is just zero. So if, we, if you just fill in uh, what you get here, then you will get the uh, sort of generalized notion of metric space, which I will go into next time.